Water and power, forest and fish, and life. How do you upgrade and revitalize an aging generating station while meeting the capacity, energy, time, and cost goals of a client? So what SNC Lavalin are doing here in Camden River, we are replacing the old generating station with a new facility. And the new facility uh, comprises of a new intake structure, intake shaft, a power tunnel leading down to the new underground powerhouse, which is housing new state-of-the-art equipment. This project was initiated in 2007, and there were three project drivers. One was earthquake risk. The powerhouse in which state penstocks would not withstand even a low to moderate earthquake. Uh, we had reliability concerns. The powerhouse was essentially 70 years old. And then 95% of the river flow in the Cam River, salmon cap of the world, comes out of the powerhouse. So if we have one, two, or even six generators go offline, that will lower the river flow very quickly and can strand fish in the river. So it was a big environmental risk for us. So those are the three project drivers and ultimately we landed on the replacement of the above ground facility with the new underground facility that was designed by SNC Lavalin. You come to the table early in the process. You bring smart people on board. Gather a good, strong team together that, that works well. Uh, and, and I think that's the best part of the job, really. You use innovative 3D technologies and inventive funding strategies. We use the building information modeling in this project, which really helped us uh, in any aspect. So BEAM includes Revit, Navisworks, virtual reality, uh, quantity takeoffs, structure analysis, clash detection, and we used all these during the design, detailed design of project. You bring in a local workforce to help. We had 110 self-identified First Nations that were working on the project. And then for the community, we worked with the business community, whether it's the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the, the Construction Association. You know, having people ready and prepared for the employment opportunities. We had over 100 Vancouver Island-based companies work on the project for supplies and services, subcontracts. You adapt as changes and challenges occur. One of the challenges uh, delivering this product uh, was to drill and blast uh, adjacent to an operating generating station. You partner and engage with a client and a community who trusts and values what you bring to the table. You have a dialogue with community stakeholders that becomes the basis for long-term relationships. The relationship is critical and um, there hasn't always been one. You know, when this infrastructure was put in, I believe in the you know, 1940s, 46 maybe, in an era where First Nation engagement and consultation was not even thought of as far as the types of impacts it would have on our people relying upon this watershed for its fish values, for its other habitat and ecosystem values. Um, so it was really encouraging to see that that was part of the, um, the rationale and the design. So when BC Hydro started this project, we we consulted with First Nations. There's three key First Nations here. There's Comox First Nation, the Weewakai, and the Weewakum First Nation. Uh, BC Hydro was able to develop impact benefit agreements, uh, which was excellent in terms of historically there was no consultation with First Nations when this facility was built in the 1940s. And then uh, in Power BC and SNC Lavalin carried that through. We had joint ventures that were created. Meetings uh, prior to the award of the contract through the bid period. Um, and, and then they organized sort of workshops with us, with all the local uh, businesses to see where we might be able to use them to the maximum extent to, to give benefits to the region. To the region. So yeah, there was a lot of um, that liaison. You bring a culture of respect, reliability, safety and transparency. You don't want to have a, an unsafe uh, project. You've got the town of Campbell River just downstream. We've got a lot of uh, tourists in the area. There's a lot of employment generated out of this project. Uh, there have been First Nations have been involved, environmental um, uh, bodies involved. So in that sense, it's very good. And it adds to the reliability of the power for the island, I think. You dedicate yourself to the project from start to finish. You give a lot of careful thought about the impact of the community and the environment. We worked hard to develop this project. The design that SNC Lavalin provided us made it even better with the underground feature of the powerhouse. It's just been a win-win along the way. There's a lot of support for the project. We've been able to maintain trail systems. 
Uh, we worked with the Rotary Club and BC Parks. We were able to develop the Elk Falls Suspension Bridge that was open in 2015. We got about 200,000 uh, visitors uh, per year. And so, you know, even this centre here, we have uh, 17,000 people come through here learning about the John Hart Project. It opened in uh, fall of 2013. Uh, that 17,000 people around the world to get the idea of the fascination of this project and so close to the city of Campbell River, Elk Falls Provincial Park, Salmon Cap of the World, Underground. It's very intriguing and we were able to uh, work with SNC Lavalin and, and ultimately develop a project that's much improved over the old facility uh, in terms of environment and, and reliability and safety. So, uh, so the community generally is a big supporter of the project which is nice to see. And it's all for what? This, and this, and this. I mean, the area that we're in, in a provincial park, it's quite pristine. I mean, it has been heavily industrially impacted in years past, but um, the forest has recovered. And it's a very popular recreation outdoor area for the greater communities. Supplying clean, reliable power to the people who live here is an important task. What are ways we can protect the downstream fish habitat, revert land back to forest, ensure reliability, protect against earthquake? The old power plant most probably would not withstand an earthquake, so we are happy that we're building this project uh, with a new safety standard. We looked around, and then we went underground. The very uh, good uh, environmental footprint, in fact, there's none. Everything underground, all out of sight. And, and the project's in a uh, provincial park that gets a lot of visitors. So we're restoring the old uh, pipeline routes to natural vegetation and so on. So the visual impact is in the aesthetics. Uh, it's something that was very attractive to the owner. Well, originally BC Hydro was looking to replace existing above-ground penstocks. Uh, and then as we investigated the concern with liquefaction during a major earthquake, we could spend a bunch of money and have a lot of damage. So we actually determined that it's best to place it underground uh, in bedrock. It's seismically strong. Uh, and then SNC Lavalin took it a bit further and put the actual powerhouse underground as well. So uh, it, it's, 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 it's basically for a driver for the project. But ultimately, yes, the community benefits by having a facility underground. And in some areas, it'd be hard pressed to know there's a hydroelectric facility there anymore. The 1.8 kilometer long wood stave and steel pentox, pentox are being removed. Uh, the, the area will be allowed to return to forest over time. That'll better fit in with the surrounding Elk Falls Provincial Park. When a project can power a community, protect fish habitat, promote respect, goodwill and collaboration, and restore a natural setting, well, that's the kind of project that gets us up in the morning. This is basically a project of a career, really. Uh, it's got everything in it. You've got uh, First Nation, traditional territories, you've got uh, Salmon Cap of the World, Class A Provincial Park. It's five kilometers from downtown Campbell River. For me, it's, 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 it's not gonna be a better project. And for BC Hydro, it's, this, is a, a large, this is the largest project we started since uh, about the 1980s. Uh, we're very proud of that. Power to the people, respect for the earth.